What's crackalacking? It's your boy Broshmo. Just in case you did not know, so in the Senior Bowl is here at least senior bowl week is here we had the weigh-ins today i'm gonna give you my winners and losers of the weigh-ins we also had practices but eventually that got closed off to the media uh, closed off from the media uh because of weather but there's plenty of video and film out there whether it's on twitter or youtube so if you want to go hunt that out and check it out you really should because let me tell you the the american team receivers really put on a show today it was it was a thing of beauty but uh i will have a mock draft later today man it's gonna include trades it's gonna be a ton of fun check out that i might have a mock the mock as well today but let's go ahead let's dive into this uh let's talk about spencer brown man because we kind of knew this guy was already going to be a freak uh physically and he didn't disappoint he came in at almost six nine he uh, he was 314 pounds but 82 inch almost almost 83 inch wingspan ridiculous 34 inch arms uh, 10 and a half inch hands almost 10 and a half inch hands like we knew this guy physically was going to look dominant and we know he's got a very good athletic upside the real worry or concern with him is he's a very raw prospect in terms of his technique he would he, he would get out leveraged in 2019 by honestly quicker pass rushers but uh and he didn't get to actually get a chance to play in 2020 because they've just kept postponing the season so senior bowl is going to be big in terms of play and how see how he if he's progressed at all during this off time since they didn't have a season ben cleveland man we knew he was going to be physically imposing man and he was dude six six 354 pounds but it doesn't look like he's got much fat on him. I mean, he 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 looking lean. He looking muscular. That's what he's looking. He's looking muscular. Like if you like anime, My Hero Academia. There's a villain in there called Muscular. That is Ben Cleveland. Right now, actually, man, I got in a fight. Not a fight. Me and my dog were wrestling, and she got me in my face, and I look, kind of look like an anime villain. But that's beside the point, man. He came in. He measured out great. Uh, we got to see a full workload from him in the 2020 season, which was kind of uh, the hesitancy we uh, with with his tape was like, well, he hasn't really eclipsed. I think it was like 400 snaps at, at during his whole time there at Georgia, whether it was because of injury or academic and ineligibility. But he did it this year, and he literally looked dominant. So I look forward to seeing more from him this week. Cornell Powell, out of the receivers, honestly, the receivers looked very good very very good and i'll get into that later uh if you're listening to this on the podcast or if you are a member you get the full version of this and i'll kind of go into what i saw from some of the receivers uh today or i guess yesterday you're gonna be listening to this wednesday morning but cornell powell man he came in with 10 inch hands the boy got hands i got small hands this guy's hands huge and he really looked in in drills man he, he showed very solid hands he looked pretty pretty well keep in mind fifth year senior yo i think he's still gonna be kind of just a day three guy but i was impressed with what i saw from him today uh and actually there's a few edge guys which i'm gonna go into uh right now there's three edge guys that came in and weighed in very impressively and probably the most impressive of the bunch was was hamakar Rashid Jr. out of Oregon State came in 20 pounds heavier than he how he played at Oregon State because he was like what 238 he came in weighing 254 ridiculous because this guy he's got a very explosive first step he may have only one or two pass rush moves and it's a pretty swim move but he's got a very explosive first step it'll be interested to see because I didn't catch any of his drills um today if he still retained that explosiveness he has so i'm very intrigued i can't wait to see more from him this week but that i was very impressed with and then janarius robinson hopefully i didn't butcher that first name janarius janarius robinson there we go was a guy i didn't really look too much into out of florida state and honestly he came in just oh 87 inch wingspan 34 almost 36 inch arms like that type of length is freakish dude and i was like going back and he's actually like solid as a pass rusher for florida state i mean he played uh 
Like, in 2018, he played significant snaps, but he really took a step up in terms of how per, how how well he started producing. In 2019, 753 snaps, uh, which he had 36 pressures, four sacks. Then he upped that, uh, well, I say up that, but he, he, he was on path to having a bigger 2020, ended up only playing 465 snaps, but he had three sacks, 25 pressures. Like he is actually a solid pass rusher. And I mean, he's, he's got like about in the last two seasons, he's a, about a 15% win rate, which is solid. You know, that's, I mean, I'm cool with that on day three. And this is honestly what I wanted Joshua Kando, uh, which he declared, but he's not here at the senior bowl. Um, I don't know if he actually qualifies for the senior bowl though. Uh, this is kind of what I wanted to like see. This is kind of what I hope for. So I'm, I'm excited. I didn't really see any of any drills today with the defensive line. Uh, I really just kind of saw the weigh-ins when it came to the defensive line. But yeah, I'm very, very intrigued at this point. William Bradley Keen out of Baylor. The dude's a transfer from Arkansas State. Another guy that put on significant weight. He's up to 254. Uh, I did actually see a couple of his drills. And it, he was all right. You know, it was so-so. Still feels like a late day three. But I like that he put on more size. Because that was a bit, that was kind of my concern of him being an undersized pass rusher. So I look forward to seeing more of him. And actually, uh, Rashid, the Oregon State day cat this week and then actually robinson too because for me robinson for the most part is a relative unknown i didn't watch a lot of robinson's film this year or at least if i did wa when i did watch florida state film i'm looking at like guys like Corey durden who's now at nc state uh marvin w uh wilson joshua kando who didn't even really play that much so yeah i i can't wait to actually i think i'm gonna this week i'm gonna go back and look at robinson quite a bit and then let's talk losers because not everyone came out looking good at least measuring well uh Kalen Ganson uh Granson the tight end at a SMU because okay outside of the top four tight ends in this class being you got Kyle Pitts you got Pat Fryermuth, you got Brevin Jordan and you have Hunter Long which Hunter Long came in huge catch radius he is literally a quarterback's best friend it's going to be a great contested catch guy. He already is a great contested catch guy, but Branson did not look that great Or <laughs> in terms of his weight and only 60, uh, 6'2", 242 pounds. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't think he really has a role in the NFL, uh, which I'm kind of like, at least with a guy like the old Miss tight end, Kenny Aboa, you could say maybe he could function as a big slot. Because uh, he's not much of a blocker in his own right. Doesn't have much weight to his name. But yeah, I feel like guys like this, I mean, they might be just late day three flyers, unfortunately. And then Drake Jackson. Oh, oh, out of Kentucky. I'm getting Nick, if Nick Harris flashbacks right now from last year. Like Nick Harris was a uh, center out of Washington, undersized. And Jackson came in looking about the same, dude. Only two. He didn't eclipse that 300 mark, which... You kind of hope for in your offensive lineman. I mean, it's not the end all be all, but 31 inch arms, man. 31 inch arms. He got small hands too. Like originally with Nick Harris, I had him kind of as a second rounder. Then after the senior bowl, I really dropped him off my board to early day three. He ended up going to the fifth round to Cleveland. And honestly, I think depending on how Drake Jackson looks this week, I might drop him to a fifth round prospect. It's just starting to feel that way. Uh, and then while we're on talking about centers, Creed Humphrey, which I don't think he's going to be a center in the NFL. He came in with a short, uh, short arm length in his own right. And actually I caught a few of his drills and he really wasn't doing a good job of getting, um, getting his hand up on the inside. You know, you like, uh, who was he facing off against? Uh, I think it was the UCLA. Was it? I think it was the UCLA uh, defensive uh, lineman. Maybe it was Levi Wuzariki. It was one of those two. I can't recall, but 
they they had a couple of drills against one another and like he could not get his hand on the inside which i mean you want to get your hand kind of in that strike zone so to speak so you could literally control the defender and he was really slow at doing that but again you and you would think with sh- with short arm length man be quick to do that but yeah, I mean, this is not surprising. I think he came in at 6'4". Again, uh, him getting out leveraged by much stronger interior guys was kind of a bit of a problem. You could go back to the Quentin Williams tape a couple of years ago. You go back last year with Bravery on Roy, uh, the Baylor, Baylor uh, defense, former Baylor defensive interior guy. So, I mean, honestly, I think I, I feel like I'm real right about Humphrey. He translates better at guard, and he probably is a third-round pick. And I feel like this week, a lot of people are going to kind of jump off that first round hype for Humphrey, but we'll see. And then I want to talk about a couple of the corners here, because boy, one of the guys I was really blowing smoke about, like blowing smoke in, was Robert Rochelle. And he came in, he ain't 6'2", he's 5'11", at barely 5'11", which was like already a... Whew, not as tall as I thought. He 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 didn't he didn't get to 200 pounds, which is like okay, it is what it is. But I mean, still athletically, it's like okay, this guy maybe athletically he's supposed to be a specimen. He looked not great in drills. He was constantly beat by like beat downfield like downfield like I think it's Kadarius Tony just sauced him. Um, honestly, he was sauced on a couple of a uh, couple of routes like. He just looked at a place. There was one where he was beat initially and he showed pretty good recovery speed. Um and ended up he didn't he didn't force the incompletion. Like he kind of ran by the guy. It, it was a poor throw. <laughs> uh I mean it was in the back of the end zone, so I guess it wasn't that poor of a throw. It was where they had to put it, but it felt like it was real late. But he doesn't turn around, man. On those deep balls, he just doesn't turn around. Like he didn't look great, man. He he definitely feels like late day three. He might look better the like the remainder of this week, but I didn't like it. And then speaking of another school prospect, we have uh Brian Mills out of North Carolina Central. He came in weighing uh ten pounds heavier, but still six foot. 180 he's only 180 and he actually looked not great in drills. He another guy, another small school guy coming in and he just looked outmatched unfortunately so this is a guy that might might be a late day three if not undrafted free agent um i wasn't really impressed with anything i saw from him and then i want to talk about this edge guy because he actually looked very good in drills wyatt hubbard out of kansas state now i have him as a loser here just because if we're strictly talking weigh-ins the guy's got short arms only 30 inch arms he's literally like a dinosaur but he showed a great like he showed really good a really good motor really good flexibility too like around the edge and just power dude is strong you gotta wonder will that translate with his lack of length lack of height at the next like in the nfl that's that remains to be seen i still feel like he's in this mid day three conversation just because of his his um his limitations on length like again he he has no length it was he was among the shortest arm lengths you'd see at the whole dang combine i honestly think no one had shorter arms than wyatt hubbard and, and i'm crapping you now i'm pretty i'm pretty sure of that i don't think anyone had any like anything under 30 inch uh arm length but he did look good in drills i don't want to take that away from him but I do think he came out looking, uh, came out as a loser, so to speak, in the weigh-ins. And uh, yeah, if you want to listen to the full, full uh, version of this, I'm about to go into some of the notes I took while looking at some of the drills and maybe some of the other weigh-ins. Uh, you can check out the podcast; the links in the description below, or you can become a member and you'll get the whole video. Yeah, you might like it. <laughs> But until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.